Yes, we are gatekeeping K-pop mullets. I said what I said, okay? I said what I said. I said what I said. Okay, well, what okay. you said was some bull That's You don't what like it, it you I'm saying I, I don't want to come down from you. We'll get lost together. Let me fight. Hey guys, it's Bree here. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. So I'm really excited to get into today's video, reacting to my subscribers' unpopular K-pop opinions part one. Yes, my lovely subscribers, you guys know who you are. You made this video possible. So about a week ago, I made a community post asking my subscribers for their unpopular K-pop opinions. And let me just say, y'all really delivered. So I'm going to be reading and responding to your unpopular K-pop opinions, getting into whether I agree with them or not. So today we're going to be touching on BTS, TXT, Stray Kids, the Woojin situation, K-pop mullets, K-pop concepts, cultural appropriation in K-pop, and more. So like I mentioned before, this video is part one and I will be releasing part two next week. So definitely stay tuned for that. And let me just say again, thank you so, so, so much to everyone who participated. I appreciated all of your input. And like I said in my community post, you guys could be as honest and brutal as possible with these K-pop opinions and you definitely were. We love to see it. I just want to give a quick disclaimer, the purpose of this video is just to share opinions and have fun, so please don't take anything I say personally if you feel like I'm talking about one of your favorite K-pop idols or groups because my intention is not to offend, this is just supposed to be a lighthearted video, like I said, to share opinions and have fun. So before we get into the video, I realize that only a small percentage of people that watch my content are subscribed, so if you haven't already and you like my content, make sure to hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, and give this video a thumbs up. Now let's get right into these juicy unpopular K-pop opinions. Okay, so we're starting off strong with our first unpopular K-pop opinion here. And the first unpopular K-pop opinion is Cat and Dog by TXT is a furry anthem. Period. <laughs> Period. Okay, so let me just say, when I read this opinion, I literally laughed out loud. Like, not just LOL, no, like I actually did laugh out loud. So, Cat and Dog is one of my favorite songs by TXT, but I never really considered it to be a furry anthem. I guess I just never really thought about it. But once I looked into it, I did see that a lot of people do consider it to be a furry anthem, especially with its references to being a pet, being your pet, etc. Personally, I still see it as a really innocent song though, especially since TXT are still very young and were even younger when Cat and Dog was released. I guess I just always saw the whole pet concept of the song and music video as really innocent and adorable. I guess like the concept of quote unquote puppy love, being young and so wrapped up in your first crush, doting over their every move and naively wanting to be by their side forever. That kind of thing. So I can kind of see where you're coming from, but girl, oh my god, let me enjoy cat and dog in peace, please. Okay, number two. So here's another one that I feel very strongly about. K-pop mullets need to stay. Okay, so hear me out. When mullets first became a thing in K-pop, I wasn't feeling it at all. But I'm a changed woman now, okay? I discussed this with one of my friends who absolutely hates K-pop mullets, and I have to say, not all K-pop mullets are created equally, period. Like, that's just a fact. Not all K-pop mullets are created equally. So when I was talking to my friend about this, I was like, we need to have like a K-pop mullet ambassador program or something. Now listen, I know this sounds crazy, but just listen. So I think a few idols need to be elected or approved to have mullets because they can pull it off, but no one else can have one. So like in theory, okay, I would elect TXT's pink mullet Yeonjun as head of the K-pop mullet council. I mean, come on guys, look at him. Just look at him. This whole pink mullet look for like the blue, our era was an entire vibe. And then Young from BTS would be the vice president of K-pop mullets for sure. You guys already know. He really pulls off mullets. He's done like the regular mullet, the curly slash wavy mullet. He's vice president. But I will insert some of my favorite K-pop mullets here as well. Some of the honorable mentions like Kai, Felix, Minghao, aka The Eight, and Hansei. 
Mwah, chef's kiss. So yeah, if K-pop mullets are gonna stay, I'm sorry, but we need to gatekeep them. <laughs> yes, we are gatekeeping K-pop mullets. I said what I said, okay? I said what I said. I said what I said. Okay, well what okay. you said was some bull That's you don't what like it, it is. Not every K-pop mullet is a good K-pop mullet, sorry. So number three, we need to stop overhyping every band. People hype up some bands and when you check out their music, it's uh, not so good. So basically, let's stop doing the I stand a group and you should too bandwagon. Hmm, okay, so I can see where you're coming from about this unpopular um, K-pop opinion, but I think at the end of the day, it's kind of a matter of opinion and I know it is an opinion, duh. So just to give you an example, like maybe someone feels that a K-pop group's music is really good, but maybe personally, it's just not your cup of tea. So you feel like they're being overhyped, but I do see the sentiment of saying that a lot of groups are underrated a lot because I do think that the this group is so underrated thing is very overused. I think sometimes there are situations where there's a group that maybe comes from a very small label that's not very well known and maybe doesn't have all of the resources. But if you look at their discography, their music, their dancing, their performance, their aesthetics, just their whole overall package, they are really good. And I know, I'm sure you guys, if you've watched my videos, I'm sure you know what K-pop group I'm about to talk about. I think Ace, the boy group by Beat Interactive is a perfect example of a group that's not overhyped. When people say you should stand Ace, it's actually because they are very talented and I just think they don't give enough credit. Okay, so number four. Dynamite is not as good as everyone says it is. <sighs> okay, I might get dragged for this, so armies, please don't come for me. I'm an army too, but I do not like Dynamite at all. I, I never even added it to my Apple Music library, and I never listened to it. I'm so sorry, but it's the truth. To me, Dynamite was just too overly auto-tuned to the point where it just sounds unpleasant to me, and it sounded too much like a generic pop song that you hear all the time on the radio, which is why I think it blew up internationally, plus the fact that it's English as well, of course. And I also just wasn't feeling the melody of the song either. I guess it's just not my thing. Don't get me wrong, I really love BTS. I think they deserve all the attention they're getting. They worked so hard, and they literally came from nothing. But for me personally, in general, I feel myself drifting away from BTS's music more and more lately, to be honest. I just really miss their old music, and I think the last album that I really enjoyed was Love Myself Tear, and then Black Swan was the most recent single by them that I really loved. I love that BTS has blown up the way they did, but as far as their music, I just personally wish that they could go back to their roots. Number five, Ayo, hey, listen up. Mark's black scent is cringy as fuck, and SM always makes a big deal and centers him to showcase it. Let this Canadian multi-talented baby just rap fast bilingually and stop making me embarrassed to be an end citizen. Okay, now as an end citizen myself, I'm sure you guys already know, you see my intro and outro every video, you see my username, Brisigeny, you know I'm a huge end citizen. So I love Mark Lee, but I do agree with this. Sorry, I just do. The video of Johnny and Mark trying to prep Chun Love for a phone call with American basketball player Steph Curry by trying to teach him AAVE or African American Vernacular English immediately came to mind. It was just so unnecessary that they assumed Steph Curry talked a certain way or talked black quote unquote and that Chen Le needed to learn a black scent or AAVE to communicate with Steph Curry. I think that Mark is such a talented rapper. He's honestly one of my favorite rappers and brings so much to NCT. Like I love how he effortlessly switches between English and Korean when he raps and I think he has some of the most iconic lines in NCT's discography. I mean, come on, his verse, his iconic verse in Super M's Jopping? But I do wish the SM would stop capitalizing on Mark's black scent and just let him rap authentically. Like I get that Mark is one of NCT's quote unquote foreign or Western idols like Johnny is. All right guys, yeah. what's up? We're what's the, up? Uh, we're the, uh foreign swaggers. And I understand they like to capitalize on the fact that he's Western or international, but we can highlight the fact that Mark is Canadian or Western without doing the black scent thing. But then again, we don't know if this is something that Mark is doing on his own or if it's something that SM is pushing. But yeah, the more I hear the intro to Resonance, the more cringy it sounds to me, to be honest. We love you, Mark, but yeah, the black scent has got to go. Number six, changing clothes doesn't equal change in concepts. Colors being bright doesn't automatically equal cute, and black doesn't automatically 
equal dark. There's a whole spectrum out there, people. So yeah, I totally agree. Clothes do not make the concept of the video. For example, for me, for a song or music video to be a dark concept, just putting black clothes on does not make it that. The overall aesthetic of the music video should give off dark vibes and so should like the lyrics, the choreography, etc. So it should be like an entire package. Off the top of my head, a dark concept that I really liked and felt was very cohesive was Pentagon's Dr. Bebe. So the lyrics talked about being heartbroken and in pain and Pentagon said that Dr. Bebe or their love interest who left them was the only one who could save them. They were trapped in this vicious cycle of pain and heartbreak, not able to free themselves. The concept of the music video, which depicted them being trapped in some sort of asylum with a lot of dark imagery, paired perfectly with the lyrics and so did their erratic, almost deranged choreography. They really delivered with their live performances too, especially one of the members, Kino, who's my favorite. He really got into character with his amazing facial expressions. So all of these pieces put together made it a perfect example of a dark concept in my opinion. Yes, yeah, so creating a concept is so much more than putting on dark or light clothing and calling it a day. All right, so here's number seven. Stray Kids transitions are really jarring. There are several songs by them I can't get behind because the transition between the hard hitting parts and the soft vocal parts are too abrupt and don't flow properly. The best example I can give is God's Menu. I love many parts of that song, but I can't enjoy it as much as I want to because the transition interrupts my vibe. Okay, so I can definitely see where you're coming from with the jarring transitions. Specifically in God's Menu, the pre-chorus is a little slower and laid back, the vocals are softer, and then the chorus is very loud, heavy, and in your face. I guess you could say the transition between the pre-chorus and the do 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 part are kind of abrupt, but to be honest, for me, that's the part, that's like part of the appeal to God's Menu. It's a very hard-hitting, heavy, in-your-face song, and I think that's probably what Stray Kids were going for with their transitions. I think they actually meant for you to feel that initial shock or surprise, like with the whole pre-chorus kind of just quickly dissolving into the in-your-face. Me and a few of my friends always joke around and say that Stray Kids make fight music and I feel like God's Menu is a great example of that. It just gets you really hype and I, I just love that even with the transition. Number eight, stop using my culture as an excuse for fan wars or to hate on a group. If it's not your culture, stop getting offended for us. I remember when this one popular girl group had a comeback that featured a lot of South Asian and Middle Eastern elements. I was so happy because finally a group actually took their time to do research on my culture. I'm not gonna name the group because a a lot may feel iffy about them and that's fine, but I can support whoever I want and I don't care what people think of me. I finally felt appreciated and a bunch of other Desis or Arabs had to defend them in the comment section. Those same people were probably the ones silencing us when YG put our God on the floor and disrespected my religion. Yeah, so I agree with this 100% and I know exactly what you're talking about. I know what God you're talking about. I think it was um, Ganesh, which is like one of the Hindu gods. I think it's the one that looks like an elephant and I do remember that in How You Like That, there was a statue of that god on the floor next to Lisa. And I think YG did edit it out of the video, but still. I agree with this 100%, and I especially see this sort of performative outrage going on on Twitter a lot. If a K-pop idol or group commits cultural appropriation, I think it's okay to point it out, but you should never speak over the community whose culture was appropriated. And you especially shouldn't use it as an excuse to drag the idols or groups into the mix and pit them against each other. So to this day, I still don't understand the whole concept of fan wars. I think it's really silly and immature at the end of the day. Like, I just want to enjoy k-pop content and music period that's it so number nine your bias wearing an outfit you don't like for a stage does not mean they are being mistreated by their company. Okay, so yeah, let's be real. Like, sometimes stylists drop the ball and that's just that. It happens to every k-pop idol or group at some point. You find yourself wondering, like, hmm, um, who dressed this k-pop idol today? <laughs> you know what I mean? But just because you don't like an idol's outfit doesn't necessarily mean that they're being mistreated. For all you know, maybe that particular idol liked the outfit that they were wearing. I think sometimes we assume that K-pop idols have absolutely no agency or no power in their careers and that we have to speak up for them and protect them, but that's not always the case and we shouldn't jump to conclusions, especially over an outfit. 10. If a member comes out of a group under any reason except kicked out, that doesn't mean that they beat or did something bad. Uh, yeah, so my mind immediately went to Woojin with this one. When Woojin left Stray Kids, everyone assumed he was kicked out for something that he did, and when the allegations of and 
came out, most people, even Stays, believed that the allegations were true. And to be honest, when the allegations came out, I believed them at first as well. Only to find out that some anti-fans in Brazil made up the entire story. Yeah. I made a video on this topic if you want to check out the whole situation, I will link it in a card. But after the Wujin situation happened, I kind of like took it as a learning experience and I just realized that unless a company comes out and says someone was let go for doing A, B, or C, unless they explicitly say the idol violated the company's policy and was released from their contract or kicked out, it's best to not jump to conclusions. Idols can leave a group for personal reasons and I think that's what happened with Wujin. 11. Unpopular opinion and I might get brutally dragged for this. I have a hard time understanding scandals. I truly believe it's because I never went to a Korean school, am not Korean, and do not know their story. But whenever I see a scandal, it baffles me. I wonder what exact type of thing went on as kids that they make it a lifelong mission to try and bring down a successful person. And why does it seem they only bring up allegations when the person is extremely successful, i.e. Sujin scandal the second she got a solo brand deal. I'm not victim blaming in any way, but I personally do not understand the amount of effort put in by the victim as an adult to tear this person down when it also affects that person's company and bandmate. I 100% agree that it should be investigated and taken very seriously at the same time. I would hear the ages and they would be literal kids. And yes, I know this 100% sounds like I'm trying to say get over it to the victims, but if someone comes out about in my country, they would just look goofy, which is why I don't truly understand it. It's one thing when they're grown adults. Adults, Irene versus being young, dumb, stupid, and mean because damn near all kids has done or said something ignorant, stupid, and mean. And at the end of the day, the exact root problem is never addressed. Scandals are going to go away and people are going to go back to normal lives while kids are still being without any real help. So yeah, this opinion is so relevant right now, especially with all of the allegations that have popped up in the past couple weeks. So to be honest, it's hard for me to understand culture in South Korea as well because I live in the United States. But from what I've gathered, is a huge issue in South Korea and it occurs on a much larger scale than how it happens in other countries. There's basically a whole culture built around it and teachers don't seem to have the authority to stop it. There are also groups of kids who versus one or two people who might be students. Also, from what I understand, incidents of seem much harsher in Korea. I think since Koreans recognize as such a huge issue in their country, they take a no-nonsense approach to it. So if it's discovered that a celebrity committed in their childhood, their reputation could easily be destroyed. I also believe that as kids, we do stupid things that we possibly grow and learn from as adults, but of course I can't excuse as something that's okay to do as a kid. Wrong is wrong, but should a scandal destroy your career as an actor or idol? Does what you did as a kid make you a bad person? Like you, I also wonder why so many people have recently came out and exposed idols who are famous and at the height of their careers. But it could be the case of the victims never getting over their trauma and wanting closure or justice for the situation. If they really were by the idol or actor in the question. If idols did be someone, they should be held accountable for it. But I don't know exactly what that accountability should look like. I think it depends on the situation and should be judged on a case-by-case -case basis. That's just my take. 12. I don't get why K-pop stands have to stay awake 24 hours streaming or using your money to buy albums just for the numbers. Enjoy the music. If the song doesn't do well on charts, that's fine. Don't force a song to be good when it isn't. And lastly, stop making rich people richer. They can afford to buy anything they want. We can use that money on people who really need it. I'm talking when fans send expensive gifts to the idols. Okay, so maybe I'm just like an old millennial hag, <laughs> but I've never cared about the whole streaming thing. I do buy albums here and there if it's an artist I really like and I really like the album, but I also barely vote. I just like to enjoy the music and if my faves do well in the charts, that's great. I just do not have the time to stay awake and stream for hours. Like I have a full-time job and two cats to take care of, sorry. And yeah, if a song is a good song, it will probably do well, but if it's a smaller artist competing with a much bigger, more popular artist, I I can see fans wanting to stream their content to help them if they're the underdog. As far as people buying expensive things for idols, I didn't even know that this was a thing until a couple weeks ago. I think I read an article that was saying something like fans bought Blackpink's Rose tons of expensive gifts like designer bags, etc. for her birthday and mailed them to her. I think showing appreciation to artists is nice, but like you said, these idols have money and deals with a lot of designer brands that just give things to them for free in exchange for promotion all the time. I feel that spending thousands of dollars on idols is kind of ridiculous. I mean, will Rosé even get
get the things you're sending her? I mean, I can't tell people what to do with their money, but it does seem pretty excessive. 13. Woojin was innocent in Stray Kids. I touched on this earlier, but yeah, although I can't say 100% because I can't read Woojin's mind, to me the evidence shows that Woojin was innocent and that those crazy anti-fans just tried to ruin his career, and it's really sad. 14. I have a hard time standing girl groups because of their bodies. Hear me out. I guess you could say I'm skinny shaming, but I don't care. They are so skinny it worries me. If every time I look at them and think they need to eat, I'm going to not have a good time standing them since I have and I know you could say I'm being double standard because the guys are so skinny, but they are allowed to have muscles unlike girls. Okay, so I'm kind of torn about this one because I do acknowledge that some Asians can tend to be physically smaller than some other races, and I do understand that if you have an this could trigger you if you see a female idol that's really small, but I do agree that to fit the idol standard, female idols do have to sometimes undergo extreme diets and fitness routines to fit the Korean beauty standard. Plus factor in busy schedules and stress and that'll affect an idol's weight too. However, like you said, this is the case for male idols as well. I think we're like treading a very thin line here because we really don't know what is considered a healthy weight for each individual idol, so all we can really do is hope that they are healthy. I'm obviously a huge boy group stan, but female idols being small or skinny doesn't really affect me personally from getting into their music, especially since I know that boy group members can be skinny too. I guess personally I just don't look into it that much and just enjoy the music, but once again I do see how it could affect someone that has I also think that it really depends on the girl group. For example, I wouldn't consider the members of TWICE to be thick or anything, but to me, overall, they look pretty healthy and have some muscle, especially Momo. I also think Ryujin from ITZY is a good example too. She's actually discussed the whole issue of female idol body image and its double standards in K-pop. Okay, so here's the last one, 15. I guess this is more of a theory, but I feel like one group is going to blow up and have BTS not be the first group in the near one or two or three years. I don't know, it's just a gut feeling. So as K-pop continues to expand in the West and internationally, I think it's very possible for another K-pop group to make it big internationally. Big Hit continues to hold international auditions and other companies like SM have attempted to tap into the Western market as well by creating Super M. Now I have to say, if they want to surpass BTS, they do have really, really big shoes to fill. It was just announced that BTS surpassed Taylor Swift and was the highest selling artist globally in 2020. Like BTS is huge, but as a longtime K-pop stan who could have never imagined years ago that K-pop would be as big as it is internationally nationally today, I would love to see another K-pop group make it big to increase the spread of K-pop internationally. Alright, so that wraps it up for part one of reacting to my subscribers' unpopular K-pop opinions. I hope all of you enjoyed it, and if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to stay tuned for part two. I have a lot more unpopular opinions coming. So what do you think about the unpopular K-pop opinions that I mentioned? Do you have a bone to pick with me? Is there anything you strongly agree with or strongly disagree with? If so, please drop your thoughts in the comments and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks so much for for watching and thank you if you participated in this video and I'll see you in part two coming soon. Bye!